Hi, I'm Shaka Hislop and you're here at Extra Time TV. So ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Terry Fennick, the Trinidad Tobago national team's head coach. How are you doing, Terry? Very good, thank you very All much. All right, so we know you just came from a game against uh, Tobago. Yeah. It was a victory. Yes. Uh, you know, so how are the preparations going so far? Well, it's, you know, you, you'll know yourself, Andrea, it's been very difficult to get games at all. Mm. Um, we've put multiple um, schedules in that have included international games that haven't been, uh, haven't come forward. The normalisation committee have struggled to to get anything nailed down so it's been very difficult for us but games like this we we played all the six regions now in Trinidad mm -hmm. including Tobago who thanks very much they came from Tobago mm -hmm. um, into Trinidad to play against us today and we saw some good talent on the ground mm -hmm. but uh, obviously leading into a World Cup qualifier on the 25th yeah. um, I would like a bit better um, competition than, I've, than we are today. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's no secret, obviously, this COVID-19 pandemic has affected sport globally. Yeah, absolutely. It's messed up everything for everyone, yeah. particularly us in Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. So in terms of uh, you know what you wanted initially, yeah. when you first became the coach, I'm pretty sure you had some plans. Well, you, you see, what we've done, Andrea, yeah. over, the, over that period of time, 2020, and into the early uh, months of this year, mm -hmm. We've submitted multiple schedules, mm -hmm. and them schedules have included games against international teams that have confirmed that yes, they will play, mm -hmm. and it just hasn't happened. Yeah. So that's been difficult for us, and not just me as a coach, but that's my players as well. Mm -hmm. Recognising that most of my international players that are coming in from overseas, I'll only get them for days before the the, the World Cup qualifier. Yeah. So trying to get a better standard of football, um, Obviously, we took on possibly too much with the United States. They were in training camp for over three months, um, but that's all we've had mm -hmm. in, in almost 16 months. Yep. You know. So, do you think, based on like the, the, the knowledge that you're telling us now, in terms of Trinidad to be was a very demanding yes. footballing public, yeah. they expect a lot. Do you think that if they understand what's taking place? The expectations would be different. Well, I think what they need to look at as well, we've got Pro League hasn't played for 18 months, mm -hmm. Super League hasn't played. So the kids that we've got on the ground, mm -hmm. unless they've been training with the national team mm -hmm. or the Hocker the Rangers, they're not playing football at all. Yeah. So uh, it's difficult trying to pluck them out and then throw them into a game like the United States and expect them to, to be world beaters and, and get something out of it. Mm -hmm. That was a tough call for them. but. It was an experience. It wasn't just the game. It was what surrounded the game. Some of these guys um, haven't played in the game as, as big as that before. So it was, it, was, it was a big experience across the board. But we would like to play teams on the same level as us. Yeah. You know. So in terms of uh, obviously, let's speak in the context of the upcoming game. Yeah. It's pretty close against yeah. Guyana. Yeah. Um, do you think? that in terms of we yeah, have players all around the planet you know we spoke about US players players in the UK yeah do you, do you think you'll be able to get the players that you need well we don't know we, we, we obviously with uh, FIFA have now made it a rule that the clubs will preside over mm -hmm. whether they release their players or not we've now had South America they they've now postponed their World Cup qualifiers mm -hmm. because of the same thing they can't get their players from Europe back into South America. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what will happen with CONCACAF because I'm sure we will we will come across the same issues ourselves. Mm -hmm. We've identified eight to ten players mm -hmm. uh, from the UK that are playing at very good levels, players from the USA as well. Mm -hmm. And the different COVID protocol makes it very difficult for these guys to travel, mm -hmm. play a game and then go back into quarantine yeah. for 10 days, sometimes 14 days back in the, in, the, in the UK or North America. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's in the context of today, we saw that there was a team building exercise, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, it seems that, you know, uh, Gary Griffin is also highly supportive Very. of what's taking place. Absolutely. You know, so how important has he been in the preparation? Well, he's been brilliant. I mean, when you recognise that we've trained the whole of 2020 um, here at the barracks, he's provided water, food, transportation. He's done great things. He's opened up to some of our younger players to give them jobs yeah. so they've got an income. You know, 
most of the players, if not all, they haven't had a dollar yeah. in all this period of time. And very difficult for them, COVID virus, not being able to play against the other sides. So we've asked the different regions. So we've now played all six regions um, in Trinidad and Tobago. That's gone very well, but we've got to step it up a bit. Yeah. And in terms of you know the team spirit, you know, it's a very challenging time. Yeah. Uh, how was the team spirit in the camp with all the guys? The team spirit's great. I mean, we had um, some terrible press the other day. Yeah. And what I would like to reflect on is four and a half years ago, under the David John Williams administration, mm -hmm. they had the same problems and issues apparently with Stephen Hart. Mm -hmm. Now, with all due respect, Stephen mm -hmm. brought a bit of pride to our football. Mm -hmm. He'd done some good things, and um, and that was a bit unfair on him. He was fired shortly after that. But I think it's the same sort of rubbish in the background that yeah. we've, we've been used to for so long. Yeah, because I, I, I saw, we saw everybody, it's, it's a public news what took place now. Yeah. And now it's, we, I can see with my own eyes, that's yeah. not the case. Yeah. You know, they, they, everybody seems unified, all the players seem happy. Correct. You can see outside, you know, there's a combined spirit. Yeah, we took one on the chin, but it was yeah. a great experience for some of the younger guys when we came back on the ground in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. That experience brought them out of themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we were all disappointed with the result and the scoreline, but yeah. it galvanised us, it yeah. brought us together. And I'm quite confident with the guys that we've got, mm -hmm. that they're going to do good things. The squad of players that we've got, six of them now have been offered contracts overseas. Mm -hmm. So, they, you know, we're obviously doing something good. Um, but Trinidad football, Andre's got to put its socks up, it's got to get itself together. Mm -hmm. No Pro League, no Super League. The tangles and issues and problems that we've got behind the scenes is not helping the players. Yep. You know, it's, it's, it's very evident that there's a lot of uh, negativity. Yeah. So just to be very specific, you yeah. know, in sports, criticism is a normal thing. Yeah. But it seems that there's a, an unusually high amount yeah. in the context of the national team right now. Yes. Um, you know, how are you on the team handling that sort of thing? Well, we, you know, we speak every day we train. Mm -hmm. So we talk through that. You know, I've said this on many occasions over the last 18 months. A lot of it is the mental side of the game, mm -hmm. mental toughness. We've got to get into these guys so they can shape these things off that are in the background and concentrate on the things mm -hmm. that will bring us success. Not easy, I understand that, but we've got to come to terms with the individuals. We know who they are in the background mm -hmm. and let them get on with themselves. Mm -hmm. We've got to concentrate on the job at hand. Yeah, because you know, the reason why I brought this up, you yeah. know, in comparisons to previous campaigns, you know, then there's Dennis Lawrence, there was Tom, yeah. then there was Stephen Hart before. Yeah. Obviously, the, the, the comparisons can't be the same. No. You are playing during a global pandemic. Yes. There is no football, as you rightfully said. Yeah. A lot of these guys haven't played in a long time. And you, this, that was your first international match. Yes. And so, you know, I think the, the criteria yeah. based to judge you can't possibly be the same. Well, Andrea, I took the game inside of a week. Yeah. We flew out, we were in a bubble, we played the game, spent two weeks quarantining afterwards. I'd still do it all over again because that is the only game that we played mm -hmm. and it was a big experience for everybody. We watched out the United States, all of their members of staff, everybody behind the scenes. They didn't just hold out the hand to support us and give us whatever help we needed. Mm -hmm. They were brilliant yeah. and we can't get that same thing on the ground mm -hmm. here in Trinidad. We've got different warring factions mm -hmm. pulling in different directions. We need to pull it together. Yeah. We are Trinidad and Tobago. We need to be fighting as one team mm -hmm. for the national side. Yep, you know, and just without giving too much away, you know, in terms of obviously you've had to spend a lot of time with the players, yep. different types of players, yes. different groups of players. Yep. In some cases, you only had a short period of time with the guys in the yes. US. Um, now that we are approaching the actual game, yeah. you know, with, with all the difficult uh, scenarios considered, yep. It's uh, without giving too much away, technically, of course. Yeah. I, uh, how is your, you know, do you have your team sort of sorted in your mind? Or? Well, again, in my mind, on paper, we've got some terrific players. We've got a great side. Mm -hmm. Can they travel? Will they get in with the exemptions? Can we get them through without the COVID mm -hmm. restrictions? Many of the clubs in the UK are still playing their league programs. Mm -hmm. I think it's very doubtful that we'll get them players back. Mm -hmm. I think Guyana might have similar issues themselves. Mm -hmm multiple of their players are, are playing in different leagues in the UK. It's a real di difficult call, Andre. Yeah. You know, we're in a pandemic year where 
everything is shutting down. Mm -hmm. And yet, all over the world, we're watching other teams play, mm -hmm. whether it be international games, whether it be league format, Premier League, Super League, whatever. You've got MLS starting shortly in the US. We've got nothing here. Yeah. We've, we've got some of the other islands up the region, they're, they're playing games, yeah. they're in leagues. So we need to, to get that right. Yeah. So, you know, uh, just to end things off, yeah. you know, uh, obviously, the original game was supposed to be in Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. And now it's uh, obviously in the <laughs> Dominican Republic. Yeah. Um, you know, did that is that something uh, that's going to affect the team or it doesn't matter? Well, it, it affected me because I, I'm a big believer in, listen, we, we got home advantage. Mm. Uh, if we've been able, uh, allowed to have two or three, five thousand people like we have in the United States, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And it's a field that's right at home, everybody's used to it, we can do our own stuff there. I didn't want to give that up at all. Yeah. I know Guyana wouldn't have done that, we'd mm -hmm. have been playing in Guyana. Mm -hmm. So, and that goes across the board, you go to all the top nations in the world today, the Brazils, the Germanys, Spain, the uh, England side, if they get a home game, it's damn right it's going to be at home. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you know just to end things off, uh, is there anything you'd like to say to the fans and the, the people out there? I need you to keep the faith. Listen, help our youngsters, bring them through. We're, we're trying to do our bit. We're reaching out to communities. We've played all six regions now. We're waiting for these guys coming in. When they do come in, please get right behind your team, get behind your nation, and let's be successful. All right, Terry. So, once again, it's always a pleasure, and good luck in the upcoming games. Thanks, Andrew. All right, Terry. Yes. Just a reminder, everyone, for more episodes with Shaka Hislop, be sure to head over to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more updates, interviews, and content.